Hello everyone and welcome to this conversation. I haven't decided what I'm going to call this yet, but we've got Adventure James here, you can see on screen, who's been a pro very prolific sim racing YouTuber doing Gran Turismo, Dirt Rally I think as well, and um, other games. So it's going to be great to hear from Adventure James, who's based in the USA and has done some really innovative things with streaming and content creation, being on multiple platforms, trying different formats. We've barely spoken now. I've never really spoken with James before. I've been in the streams. But we've never really chatted. Mm -hmm. And we've just chatted now for a couple of minutes setting it up. But this is literally the conversation. So maybe that's what's be, what it will be called. Hopefully you can hear everything in the audio to go because this is going to be a, a one take. But it looks good. <laughs> so um, why don't you int introduce yourself, James, like however you want to. I don't know what you want to call yourself. Mm. Are you James the, the person or are you James the content creator? Oh my goodness. I mean, <laughs> the many faces of James. Um, I don't know. I, 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 I started YouTube as King Jev. That was my old gamer tag. Like the first Xbox that I ever played. And then I got rid of that. Because there's like that phase clan and there's a Jev in there. Uh, okay. That was just awkward, you know, because I'm as big as that guy. Um and then it was, you know, Adventure James, and now I've got rid of the adventure. And now I'm just James. So, yeah. you know, it's... Uh, yeah. You're going to shorten I'm, it to just J eventually? Is that the direction of travel? Gonna, I'm going to keep losing <laughs> uh, letters. And, yeah, I'll probably just end up with J. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, 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 I found Gran Turismo Sport, like... In, like, whenever I started, 2018, watching Super GT, and I was like, oh, I, I used to be good at like V-Rally and old Colin McRae games. I was like, oh, I, I can try this, because I was just starting to get into content. And I really enjoyed it. The numbers were a little bit bigger than like The Last of Us, which I was playing, or Assassin's Creed, or whatever I was playing at the time. And then... You know, the community is as the community is in sim racing and Gran Turismo Sport, which is awesome, um, really inclusive. And I sort of just got wrapped up in it. But, you know, I oh, how to describe myself right now, uh, <laughs> part retired, part coming back, part who knows what I can do when I can do it because of life. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm. excuse me, I'm looking forward to getting back into Gran Turismo 7, which I'm sure we'll talk about. And um, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting back in the game. Um, was, it, was it a conscious thing knowing that GT Sport was kind of end of life? And this video, hopefully, if you're watching it, you'll be seeing this before GT7 goes live and the hype is massive. And was that, was that a conscious thing that there was time to just, I uh, don't know what the word is, kind of take a step back and you can always get back into it and ride a hype train? Yeah, I think I think you can, and I'm sure everyone who creates content or has has probably watched it in their in their own the content creators that they've they watch is like you get that little bit of burnout and Gran Turismo Sport being oh god how old is it 2017 yeah and it and especially the sport mode being the same thing like yes innovation here and there with the combos and the FIA and penalty system and all yeah. that kind of stuff but yeah it just got too much in the fact of just root repetition and mixed with uh only being on playstation as well so like what else is there to play on playstation you could argue for other other stuff you know acc yeah. but acc's kind of dead on the console and but with like grand Turismo 7 i've just been watching twitter you know, the trailers, the discourse around it, everyone's so hyped, that nostalgia hit that mm. is going to get everyone in the feels. Um, and as a content creator, you've got to be in innovative, yeah. innovative, however you want to say it. And you've got to strike while the iron is hot. And I think something that you've done so well over the last couple of weeks is like, just been like, hey, I'm I'll good at I'll creating. I'll $5 to you later. <laughs> I'm really good at creating, and I'm speaking as you right now, really good at creating like interesting topics and talking about interesting topics, you know, like you did yesterday with that live stream with the whole Ukraine business. It's like, 
you're a you're a smart person and you can really capitalize on things that you see as being an opportunity so i'm less so like that i i can get that's, that's the opposite of every report i ever had at school so <laughs> <laughs> could have done better easily distracted yeah. every, I, I think I'm, I'm kind of throwing it back and um i think something that a lot of people have noticed about your approach to content is um yes on the one hand you would do your series like last first challenge and um like road, road to a plus these kind of series every every first lap as well i think um mm. and they were kind of very structured pieces of content with similar thumbnails and numbers i think often in the thumbnails so people could see it's a series yeah. but i always felt like you were itching to kind of do stuff outside of a box whether that was streaming on twitch as well as youtube which i guess was th- three with stream or something like that streaming on oh, God, yeah. facebook gaming Mm-hmm. Um, being probably the the Grand Tours I saw at YouTube, but that was the most on YouTube Shorts when that format was launched. In terms mm-hmm. of articles, and also not being afraid to just stream other games. So, now you big fan of like Assassin's Creed and yeah, uh, I think Elden Ring coming out maybe beyond that. But there's obviously a tension there because, and Gran Turismo Sport is a really interesting case because the bread and butter of Gran Turismo Sport content creation was do online sport daily races yeah always <laughs> and that is it like literally daily mm-hmm. race b and or daily race c and mm-hmm. either stream them for you know three hours or race them and then create race highlights and i always felt yeah. like you were kind of that wanted to be a little bit outside of that box i don't know if that's true or not but that was my impression but that I think... other people are much more comfortable being inside that box uh-huh. you were like pushing yeah, to be I outside mean... it well i think i think yeah you've 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 always got to be trying to do something new if you if you're not moving your your if you if you're not making moves you're standing still is uh a comment that i heard the other day and i'm like hmm, yeah that kind of resonates but you, you look at someone like key 25 super comfortable with doing daily races daily races daily races and that's, that is his content. So you look at that and you go, okay, some guy's doing that already. Uh, uh, I think Zavisic is currently streaming right now and he's doing the same thing, last to first challenges. Okay, okay, how can I do something different? Okay, well, can I make it an A to plus, A, A plus challenge? Can I do this? Can I do it car specific kind of thing? But, you know, with that sport mode, it's like okay, you kind of run out of ideas. So that is the challenge, but, you know, talking about, like, streaming on other platforms, you know, using the YouTube short thing. I actually just went through a little rabbit hole of watching your shorts before this, you know, and that's just another thing of, like, that uh, innovation is, like, you've got to be doing more. And I am, like, quite heavy into gaming culture. I listen to a gaming podcast every single day on the daily like multiple ones and they all talk about you know if you're if you're doing something in in one platform you're only going to get at platforms viewers but if you start spreading it you got tiktok there's a new app called hover i don't know if you've heard heard of it i don't know anything about it it's tiktok for gamers basically so same thing short clips but it's all gaming um i saw uh Tyrannosaurus Rex on there. Very nice. I was like, oh, you are everywhere. What a great guy he is. Um, but yeah, like, I think you've just got to be, you got to think outside the box. And it's hard. It's hard when I, I definitely felt like I was, I could do more. But as you all know, and other content creators know, like, you want to do it all the time. You wake up, especially when you're in it, you wake up and it's all you think about. It's like, oh, I've got this video coming out today. Oh, I want to do this thing or I want to do that thing or I want to make a podcast. I don't know if I can like schedule the same time each week, that kind of stuff. Um, Yeah, I always felt like I could do more, but just my life over the, like real life is just it's, it's in interesting. the way of that. I think there's, there's probably two different types of, sim racing content creators and we can talk about gt sport as like a specific example but 
I reckon you have content creators who quite like having the structure of, and maybe even schedules, I stream on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, whatever, and this is what yeah. I'm going to stream. And that fits in a nice box in your life. And there's lots of pros to that because you know you can do it. Your audience knows you're going to be there. You can yeah. work around it. But mm-hmm. on the other side, that doesn't, the con maybe, if it is a con, is that you can't be like, if you have a great idea on a Monday, I want to make this amazing video because it came into my head. Yeah. Well, you committed to doing a stream and it's it's interesting. Now, think about, I would think probably people like, definitely I know Rory, Key, Ollie, that structured mm-hmm. content um, kind of set times and they are the big, bigger content creators in GT Sport definitely. and do that content. But the thing is that I've seen people experience the downside of that is that content is created in a multiplayer game that is highly competitive (laughs) so there are no guarantees you can get taken out on the first lap and it's it's not like something like warzone or some other game where if you die you you know go to the next lobby very quickly or you respawn if it's like you know deathmatch something in these race if it's a if it's a 25 minute daily race c and you get punted on the first lap then that's your content gone for the next 25 minutes half an hour so yeah that's a very I think a highly stressful way of doing it. Especially on a Monday. Yeah. Like Monday evening, uh, like for the last couple of months, it's been like Monday evening, Mm. peak Gran Turismo. I respect it. You see these people and they're they're going to like, not like they're going to war, but they're kind of like that mentality of I'm committing to this, going to race, going to do my best against them. I don't know what's going to happen. And there there is a magical thing about those Monday nights when a lot of big people are streaming and you see people go head to head. And I'm sure on the viewer side, there's a lot of, I don't know if this guy's going to do good or bad tonight, and kind of either uh-huh. which way, it's probably entertaining. Um, and that comes into the, the 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 reason why people watch you. It's are you good at the game? Are you interesting to watch? Are you both? I think it's I, I think it is hard to be both. Um, Have you ever thought a lot about uh, that and thought about which camp you're in, or do you think it's maybe a bit broader than that? Uh, I, I think I'm a personal guy, personable guy. I think people like the and like it's hard to be reflective without sounding like you're an asshole. So like I think I'm a nice I think I'm a nice guy. Um and people enjoy watching and you know, I always try to be positive. I think one of my favorite months of content I ever did was a, was a GT Sport positivity month. Oh, nice. Where we just did not let anything negative negatively impact us when we got penalty or when we got crashed off we were like hey it's okay and like the chat got on board and they would like it as well and then that sort of created like a a positive space because so many areas on the internet are just absolute trash fires um how how does that play with you with the reality that the content that gets the most views is and just like ramming content Mm -hmm. do you ever think about that i've never really kind of i don't think i've ever really come to a position on it but it's like let's say you set out for an evening of racing with the best intentions to do well because we're all racers and we all want to do well and that makes us feel good just like mm-hmm. if we were streaming or not streaming good uh, streaming but let's say you get into a race with whoever the dirty driver flavor of the month is and they punt you off <laughs> yeah. halfway through do you consciously think oh this is going to make great content or i think i think everyone who has been in a lobby with let's just go <laughs> one of the big guys without saying one of the big guys yeah um they go oh here we go chat lights up they're yeah. like oh he's here he's here content boys and you're like <laughs> yes i mean obviously now i'm not a person that will antagonize that person i will actually always give them the benefit of the doubt i'm like okay you know what guys it's okay it's fine but you know my highest viewed video is the the french guy so you know it's it's tough to say like yeah how do you view it i know rory rory says that he could he said it a load of times that he can he could have created loads of videos but it's just not what he he wants like he did a salty driver Mm. uh series like probably a couple of years ago now but he like stopped it because it's not the content that he wanted to make and you do see other people going i did this i crashed this guy this guy did that and 
I think there's a time and a place for it, but I don't think you can, you know, especially when you want to capitalize, like Momo's was massive at one point. He was like the most, the hottest topic in Gran Turismo Sport for a while. So as a creator, you're like, if I get a chance to make a video on that, I will. And you had a, a great interview, like and you created a piece of content around it, but you don't want that to be your whole persona. You don't want that to be like oh that he just makes dirty yeah. driver videos i think or you can look at it from uh what's the guy who makes the uh the, the idiots of the week, week. devon uh-huh yeah, yeah but that's a great series because that's like that is light-hearted and it's not just mm. like witch hunt in one person i think but it's yeah, a difficult thing think... like if, if you have aspirations of being a good racing driver mm-hmm. then i feel like you would sacrifice too much by just hunting that sort of content um, mm. Whereas if you were doing another game, like a first-person shooter or something, I think you, or maybe even FIFA or something, you could probably build your brand around coming across interesting characters. But I feel yeah. like racing is a is a really personal. It's you and the car and your ability, and you want to do well. And you would, I think, it would fall apart if you if your whole channel was about dirty driving. But. Um, there's never a shortage of dirty driving videos for people to watch because it seems mm. to be there's a steady flow, but no one creator is really like just about dirty driving, if that makes sense. So someone, someone's always got yeah. one coming out. Um, yeah, unless we're talking about PG Motorsport, which is like he legit. Yeah, because we actually did it. We did like a, we were like a, uh, what is it, a one two there, really? Because I think you had an instant. Mm-hmm. And I think then I, I had an instant and I looked into it and I saw your instant. And I made another video. The one at Spa, um, mm-hmm. that's a whole other issue. The PG Motorsport thing. Very interesting how that channel has got to this position because that channel can now just upload any race video, and it just performs great, great comments, yeah. <laughs> and mm-hmm. it's a it's very like you know credit to them to get into that position. Does um, that make you angry? Does that annoy you? Does that frustrate you? At the time I made those videos, I was definitely annoyed because I think the time when it hit me, I don't do a lot of FIA. I've never done a lot of Mm -hmm. FIA. But when I do FIA, I I try and do the whole day. I think we were at Monza, which is a good track for me. And I committed to doing streaming a day of FIA. And so, you know, I've taken that time. I think I'd even miss going to see West Ham or something. I can't remember. Um, And I got taken out by PG Motorsport. So the first race didn't go that well, but it was the first race, and the second race might have been going better than PG most races. And I just been really annoyed. And then I'd heard people talking about PG most, but I'd never been involved with them before, yeah. and it made me really see it. And what I wanted to present was from the perspective of someone who is not even content creating, just a normal person playing the game, setting aside some time in the evening in their busy life to play Gran Turismo Sport in an FIA. Yeah championships on you know on a Wednesday night or Saturday which is an esports championship and then getting taken out by PG Motorsport and like how dis- disrespectful it is so I did post videos I think PG Motorsport commented a few times yeah. and messaged me in the game not PSN message but um not that recheck PSN messages but in the in the <laughs> lobby one time and yeah. just was was not uh repentful we did start a little movement we definitely started a movement where um for the next few weeks, all of his videos were like, you know, hashtag truth about PG Motorsport, or about <laughs> hashtag ban PGM, and like people saying, hey, this guy is in a D ranked lobby because he tanked his driver rating. But no one, none of his core viewers really cared. It's not important, which is fair enough. Yeah. You know, that yeah. is fine. And I don't think, I, I like I said, I don't think there's an issue with artificially being in lower lobbies. I don't, I don't think that's an issue. I think the, the issue I had was the way that he got into that lower lobby was taking people out to get the penalties. So he was, mm-hmm. you know, kind of, it's almost equivalent to committing some sort of crime to get jail time. <laughs> it's, <laughs> you know, um, it's the crime he committed to do it. So, yeah, I definitely was annoyed by it, 100%. And that provoked me to make the videos. The videos were, mm-hmm. were very well received. It did, at that time, I was doing a lot of the usual sport mode highlights and race highlights and that was a time where i could actually be creative and think about how to, to tell a story in a video and edit stuff and probably that has fed into the gt7 stuff you've seen because 
I learned a lot of techniques there in terms of editing and whatnot. So, yeah, maybe but it was what, for the best. What thing. content do you like creating the most? I do like you like live. I like having a variety. I wouldn't want to not do anything. Um, mm. I I really do like sitting down at my PC with a blank timeline and in a couple of hours creating a video. So I really do like that process, just as like a almost like a therapeutic process. Um. I also really like streaming, but it's very different. They're not they're actually completely different things for me. You gotta remember when I'm streaming, I'm racing and racing other people and testing myself that way and sharing it with my audience. When I'm creating a video, there's no racing involved. That's just me and my yeah. mouse. Uh, my keyboard kinda of, and my, my brain kind of creating stuff that will be enjoyable to watch. So they're I think your question was which, which one do I enjoy the most? They're two very different things, but I do really like making the videos. I would never go solely to Twitch, for example, and just stream. Mm-hmm. And that's why I think YouTube is the best platform for me because it enables me to push that video content and also live stream. Yeah, it's got that variety. What do you think what do you think about the algorithm? What do you think I mean, do you have any insider information? Like what as I've seen a lot of people talk about when you do a live stream and then a video like that damages each other or like yeah, how I, does do, a I don't have any insider or... information but I've obviously got I've seen I, you know I I do look at my analytics a lot and mm. so for anyone watching who's in, interested like this this from my perspective this there is a issue here which is that if you stream a live stream YouTube shares it as you're live and that's great uh, there'll be a click through rate for that i.e. how many people get shown the thumbnail and, and clicking it or not and that's fine because they know at that time it's live and it's a live stream to jump in. As soon as the live stream finishes, YouTube converts that to a video and pushes mm-hmm. it out again on the platform. And at that point, people yeah. are being pushed a thumbnail of like a three hour long stream um, yeah. that probably starts with an intro. So nothing happens for two two or three minutes. So the click through mm-hmm. rate is a lot lower. The average view duration is a lot lower because people click it and then they immediately click off. And it harms yeah. your ch- your channel level analytics of click-through rate and average view duration which are very important Mm -hmm. so there is an issue and actually until recently i've been unlisting all of my streams now my streams have actually been quite well i've been keeping them um keeping them live after because they i feel like there's an audience for them but before you know when i was streaming and not getting a thousand views in the stream I didn't see there was any benefit to keeping that stream up. People that really want to see it, which is is a small portion of people, you can see it on my channel because it's in the playlist. But there's, there's no way I want that stream being sent to an audience YouTube thinks might want to watch my content because I'd much rather yeah. YouTube is sending actual videos to those people, three fun videos. videos. I don't know if you, what your experience with that is, if you've had a similar effect. or I don't think you've been someone who's unlisted. I know Rory has done no. it religiously. I don't think Ollie does no. it. I think he does it from think, time to time. I think Super GT does that. I think he, I think he might, and upload it a couple of days later or a week later. Yeah, I've I mean, seen I know Jimmy. He's Jimmy be Robin back. does that. Does that as well. I don't know. I think. I think. You know, one way to do it is highlight videos. It's like, and you got to spend the time editing. So you take it down, you chop it up, and then you put it out again for people who missed it. I think that's a really good way to, uh, to make that content. I think something that I've done is downloaded the live stream and then the best bits or the best races you then just recycle that and put that into content again um yeah the the whole question around does it affect like your other videos getting out there and stuff like that is just it always seems so gray with youtube doesn't it it's yeah, like there's, there's definitely no black or white clear answer mm-hmm. it's kind of you have to interpret analytics and assess your experience really and it obviously can always change in the future because the, the algorithms always change. Mm-hmm. So and and, and, there's, and there's... Then it's like the algorithm is like, oh, you dirty driver video, yeah, let's yeah. let's pump that because that gets a lot of engagement. So I think, you know, when people do watch those live streams back, not people aren't commenting on them, are they? Really? Are they yeah. might there'll be a couple, but I mean, I've but... never really had like crazy number success on or anything. So I don't know how like bigger channels do with like comments and yeah i mean i I mean you know would you i don't really personally watch any archive live streams unless i'm looking under the content creator to see 
you know what's their webcam like what's their mm-hmm. quality like audio levels or perhaps if i'm doing a endurance race and i want to see how the endurance race last year but otherwise if i get recommended a i probably do, don't even they don't even register on me if they get yeah. recommended to me because it's that's just not the kind of content that i'm interested in at that time obviously when someone's streaming great because i know i can jump in say hi to the creator and you know see what the vibe is and see if i want to hang out mm. But that is completely gone when it comes up as a video. So that definitely is something YouTube should work out. There should be a yeah. way of keeping that video online, but marking it as separate to a a regular video. Like it's like they do with shorts, right? Like they do with shorts, exactly. So it should be like yeah. archive live streams. Um or whatever the word is. But yeah. Um although yeah, so I, that's another question. So when we did shorts, I don't know if you felt shorts hurt your regular content or not i don't know whether it hurt it but like it's weird because they get like Mm. mine get like an average of 800 views and i don't know why that is but like most of the shorts are like 800 or 1100 that that seems to be like like the the same thing um and then i'll do a regular video and it's like lower or Mm. or everything else is lower because the way that shorts work because they're so easily yeah digestible but do do you think the shorts would do you think your videos would do better if do do you think shorts has affected that or not because i don't do shorts um, anymore i used i as you know i did it quite heavily but i haven't done a short for definitely not this year i don't think Because I was I concerned can... that the view time would be lower. The average view time would come down. Oh, definitely. If it's like a 20 second video, like the maximum you can get out of that is 20 seconds. Then you go to a, a live stream and you could be hitting, you know, 15 minutes to 20 minutes on a on a really good live stream. Um, so, yeah, that de- I mean, it would definitely knock the daily uh, watch time, yeah. wouldn't it? Like it just would. But whether that actually counts for anything like or is it a percentage thing like oh if someone watched 20 seconds but actually that's a hundred percent of the video and that's what matters is that what matters i don't know because ultimately youtube is a platform that really is for viewers and Mm. it's for viewers because it's about putting advertisements in front of viewers but also not just advertisements sense of growing the platform and making it a nice place for you to spend their time so viewers come back to the platform um and it's definitely not geared towards creators. Like it doesn't need to be fair towards creators. If that makes sense. The ultimate yeah. goal is to offer the best viewing experience for viewers. What do viewers want to watch? Put that content in front of viewers, give them a choice. Hopefully they enjoy it. Hopefully they keep watching YouTube and everyone's happy. Um, so that's why I, I think with the live streams, I think it does hurt your channel if you keep them up. And that's why I stopped doing shorts because I feel like if, if, if I'm pretty sure about that with live streams, I don't see why shorts wouldn't be any different in terms of um, that view duration um, being low on the channel. I, I I strongly suspect that if as a channel you have a high average view duration and high average click rate on your channel, I'm pretty yeah. sure you get prioritized into like another band, if that makes sense. So yeah. YouTube's like, oh, hey, this channel is creating good content. So we're going to share mm-hmm. more of your videos. And I've definitely noticed my channel has been it shared a lot more with the Grand Turismo 7 stuff. I think the yeah. content I made was good and I've been improving all the time. Probably the best content I've ever made on the channel. So this is the time when it, if it was going to be shared, it would be. And I've noticed mm-hmm. that it started to share other things. And I reckon that's because my my channel stats are generally better. And part of yeah. that, I think, is not doing shorts and not keeping live streams up because otherwise they would lower the analytics. So... Again, it's just it's speculation because there's no official word on it, but that's my experience. Um, and it is a shame because I really like creating the short form stuff. I'm sure if you've enjoyed it mm-hmm. as well, you get to be more creative and more fun. So um, is like TikTok or like this hover thing something that you will look into as well? Well, I do? have a TikTok. You have a TikTok? Yeah. So I have. How I think, often do you upload on that? So I used to upload quite regularly. I've, now I I don't upload as much because I'm really trying to push, um, you know, YouTubers, and that's the place at the moment where I'm really enjoying my content. There was a time before I was doing Gran Turismo Seven stuff. 
I wasn't really enjoying making TikToks. It was more fun, short, you know, immediately engaging. But I'm in a place now where I'm really enjoying kind of making that longer, more considered content. So I have yeah. TikTok. I think I have 10,000 likes over there. It's a fun platform. Um, mm. Some of the videos have gone viral, which is great. But it's definitely not my main platform. YouTube is, is my home. And I guess the main purpose for me for TikTok is that if I want to create a kind of a vertical short video, I can now do it on TikTok. That's good for me because I can kind of like go through that crazy process. It makes me happy, yeah. but it's mm -hmm. not going to, to damage the YouTube channel, which I fear that it do may do. Do you think do. it helps? Do you think you've got people from there to come over and... Because that's, no, that's there's basically no, like There's basically zero crossover. Isn't it? In fact, I did a poll on YouTube and said, hey, I have a TikTok. Did, did you know... Are you interested in going to it? I think like ninety-seven percent of people said no. So. How many people are here from TikTok? Crickets. Yeah. So there's basically no crossover. I don't promote my YouTube there. It's really a creative outlet for me, and okay. yeah, it's just a creative outlet for me. YouTube is is definitely, you know, the big one. But yeah. I guess I was when I stopped doing shorts because of the algorithm. If the, if I didn't yeah. think it would affect the algorithm, 100%, I wouldn't have a TikTok. I just have do YouTube shorts and that's great. That's another place for my mm -hmm. content. Um, and if I really thought live streams, if there was, if you couldn't t unlist live streams, if it was like delete them or keep them public, then yeah. I'd be in a tough place because maybe I would have to consider Twitch. But yeah, at the moment, the videos and the live streams unlisted really work. So when live streams are, I think, interesting enough. So when I'm doing Road to Gran Turismo 7, that is kind of content that people do watch back. So I get a significant mm -hmm. portion of people watching those back. But when it's sport mode, daily races, there's no real need for it's people. Like to someone watch else it. is doing it. Someone else is doing it already live. People have got highlight videos. Yeah. Um, and they tend to be more interactive as well because, I'm, yeah, so it's a lot of stuff behind the scenes with the algorithm. And it's definitely YouTube is one of these platforms, as you will know that. I don't know if you, in fact, I'll ask you, you know, I'm sure there's been times where you felt like you're creating good content and the kind of the winds are not in your favor. And perhaps sometimes you create content that you didn't put so much effort into and it gets a really big push, which seems mm -hmm. like illogical. But that is the reality. I think quite a clear reality is that there are bigger forces at play in terms of whether you will be successful than how good you are at creating content. It's like, how's the it, algorithm? It does you? baffle you sometimes. Like, in my top 10 live streams, nine of them are Grand Turismo Sport, but there's one in there from Assassin's Creed. <laughs> like, a random, a random mm. Assassin's Creed one. It was just called, like, Island Hopping or something. Yeah. Like, it's just, that is, like, number six or something on the list. And it was just, and it was getting views after, like, months of stopping. So I, I just don't, it confuses me, man. But it, it, like you said, you feel like something should do better, and it doesn't, and that's just a weird feeling. And I think that, you know, all the positives that you get from content creation. Uh, Was that a fact when you kind of stepping and, back? Well, yeah. So it's it's a, a mental thing as well, isn't it? Like when you feel like you're burnt out or, or burnt out or you're not creating good enough content. For me, a big part of why step back i could not stop comparing myself to other people who are having success and i know that sounds like a really selfish way to think but oh my god i could not get out of that headspace as much as i could try and i hope when i come back i can just like i am right now ignoring mm. what other people are doing and if they're having success like really trying to be positive with it i think and I think I think I think talking about this is, could help people as well. Like, I there was one year in in January, a Super GT came into the stream. I was like, oh shit, oh my god, this is the first contact we've ever had. It was amazing. It was at Willow Springs, and I was eating sand left and right. <laughs> and he and he was having a good time, and he like he shouted me out and stuff like that. And I've got a couple of, uh, uh, you know, new subscribers and stuff like that. But I never like. The ball never. So you got really a bump, got but it going. never. It, it didn't kind of snowball. Uh huh. So the same thing happened to like basic Ollie, um, and he like shot up, Snowballed. and I could not be like. I was like, dang, what did I do wrong? And I've never 
never stopped feeling like that. And that's where the like the I mean jealousy of other people's success and it's I think it's quite hard not to That's in, that's do that interesting. And, like that. and I think obviously as a creator you always kind of look and get lots of metrics and one of those metrics is well how are other people doing? What content is successful? Should I do mm-hmm. something similar to that? So yeah, that's I think a bit unavoidable, but it's interesting because in that example, I would say that you're inherently dealing with something that's out of your control, which is Super GT yeah. shouting you out. So, but it's 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 it the it's a bigger story because it's it's almost like the bigger point is that you can be there creating really good content and committed mm-hmm. and sacrificing and doing it one, two, three, four, five days a week, like a lot of people watching this might be doing. And ultimately, you still need to wait for that big shout out, because otherwise, mm-hmm. it's well, difficult to break out. Race against, and they go, "Oh, that person did really well." Oh, yeah. they're live streaming. I'll go check them out, or wherever it is. And I'm sure, and, and was, I, I know um, you're someone that you personally shout out a lot of people. I try, and sh- you, you yeah. shouted out me a lot of times. I try and do the same thing, and I think maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe that's a recognition of how important those moments are. But that is that is a really difficult. I can't really offer any advice there because it's. <laughs> This it's is a tough. therapy session. Tough. What yeah, you didn't tough. know was this is a therapy session. Therapy <laughs> yeah, I did sign up for this, but <laughs> it's happening. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's no, tough. I just, I, just, I think that's a difficult thing for a, a, any creator to to go with. And obviously, I don't wish ill on anyone. I don't wish that their success was mine. It's more of a case of like, what did I do wrong? Yeah. In that moment, like, how could I have done something different? There was a time, and I will regret this the, to the day that I stopped watching YouTube videos. I was playing on Twitch, I was streaming on Twitch. I was streaming World War Z. Mm. While like, you were oh, GT Sport Crazy, game. you were just doing something else. A second stream on Twitch. Oh, wow. Early days. Second stream on Twitch because I was doing YouTube and I was like, oh, I'm going to play this other game. This was like uh, GT Sport here, yeah. every other game here because I'm a gamer. I love other games. Second stream on Twitch. 500 viewers on Twitch. That is big numbers. Like 500. <laughs> creeping up to 600. It was the biggest World War Z streamer at that time in the world. Mm. The game had just come out. And I was like, oh, this is great. It, it went on for a little bit. I like reached quite like a couple of hundred of followers. Oh, why do you have so many, so few numbers, all this kind of stuff? And I was like, got to like the three hour mark. And I was like, oh, it's said that I'd stream Gran Turismo Sport today. Oh, yeah. I stopped the stream with like 350 streamers and I went and streamed for uh, like seven or 12. Yeah. They on YouTube. And I have not lived that. I can't stress enough how i would do that different like it's just I've yeah never, it's, it's tough never i can definitely i can definitely identify with that because my mm-hmm. iRacing racing streams get a lot less views than my gran turismo 7 uh, sports streams mm-hmm. and also more starkly the hours spent on iRacing racing streams are much less watched than if i spent those hours making gran turismo 7 video um yeah. but i've always struggled with it because it's kind of I don't know if you really wanted to play Grand Turismo Sport or if you felt you had to because you said you were going to stream and therefore for your community because mm. I kind of feel the same way. I've got a lot of members on my channel who you know, are paying to support me, I, th- I think, because they saw me first doing iRacing. Um, yeah. And I think we're possibly a bit too nice there. <laughs> if we were a bit more uh-huh. um, selfish about growing the channel, you would have that night or day kept doing world war z and i wouldn't do as many i racing streams but it's kind of that is who we are as well right and uh, you know growing a channel is not about where you are right now if, if you look at it as kind of a longer term thing then that will be part of your dna that you do different games and um yeah but i think it comes to, to talking about taking opportunities i didn't take that opportunity yeah no we and, and but you were early right you, you, did you know on, that was a big God. number on twitch did you really feel it or only it was because... it was overwhelming okay it was like i my maximum before that was like 20 30 on youtube i'm like the chat's going and i think i work better when chat's moving because i i i Energizes think i'm a better live streamer than i am a video maker because i just bounce off chat and the conversation is you know, what we do the live stream 
the live content for. Yeah, I didn't. I don't think I did. It was like a couple of months in, and it, but I I think I did the same thing <laughs> on YouTube. Oh, gosh, Grand Turismo Sport, and it was like this was at a time where I was getting like 180, like fluctuating. I was like the peak of the peak of my content, and I was like, oh, this is great, loving it, and it just kept going up. 200, 300, yeah, 400, 500, and then. I like got to the the hour point that I had said that I'm going to stop at. I said I was going to do three hours. I'm going to stop it here yeah. at like 400 or 300 and something viewers. And I was like, idiot. Like, why didn't you just keep going? Why didn't you just skip that lecture? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, it's a tough. It, I mean, it could have gone both ways because, again, if you leave on a high, people are like, yeah, I mm. want to subscribe to this guy. I want to see what he's doing next time. Whereas if you drain yourself and you. Because I think a lot, a lot of new viewers will subscribe to you at the end of a live stream. I, I, I personally think. Um, if you drained it and finished on a low, maybe they wouldn't have. But yeah, I think it's, it's, it seems to be like you're someone who kind of, you think a lot about these what if moments and mm -hmm. what if I'd done the other thing. And all I can say yeah. is that you don't know what would have happened. <laughs> it might not have been as no. great as you thought. And maybe you you just did really well yeah. to get 500 on World War Z and you did really well to get 500 on G-Sport and you can take mm -hmm. away that you have that capability to be entertaining to that many people you can be a big mm -hmm. stream streamer it's just a case of when you're going to have that kind of subscribed following um mm -hmm. and you're ready for it because there might be other people that you know and in telling us those stories you haven't said that you were overwhelmed by it you haven't said that it was stressful you're like yeah i bounce yeah. off the chat i love it whereas you might have other people that actually the more the numbers are, the more they're worried about making mistakes when they're driving. Yeah. The more they're worried about yeah. saying something wrong, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, and you don't have that. So at least you at least you know you don't have that because you've done those yeah. test runs. And it's just a yeah. case of like building that following. But I would if I wanted to be really harsh, it does sound <laughs> a little bit like Stupidity. Yeah. No, not stupidity. It sounds like you kind of want those shortcuts, right? Because like you had oh, yeah. five hundred, and you just wanted a shortcut to getting five hundred every time. Uh -huh. You had five hundred G Sport. You kind of wanted a shortcut, and with the Super GT thing, it could have been like a, a shortcut. Yeah, and definitely. And I think it comes back to creating content that you think that might boost you, like the Dirty Driver stuff as well. I think yeah. that yeah, you can look at it that way. That's just you know you when you when you're in this content creating space. You don't pause you don't stop you don't have conversations like this that can make you reflect and um like yeah like do you th do you as a as a creator as well do you think you'll reach a point where you'll be happy and be like okay this is it now i've made it now or is it just uh because i know I, I know you're not full time in it so is that somewhere that you'd want to get to as a, a full time thing, or are you just super happy where you are and creating? So I, I'd never, create? I'd never ever want to be full time because it's my hobby and it's my like. So I like sitting down at my PC late at night, two hours making a video. So I, I like that as my space away. But I'm, mm. to be honest, I don't know. You know, I'm speaking at this point in time. We're one week out from G7, but the way the GC7 videos are being received. I'm, and this is why I I said I said that I wanted to be provocative and said that harsh combat shortcut, but it's like for me mm. the subscriber numbers actually don't matter. Even though I I want people to subscribe and always say please subscribe, the subscriber num number now doesn't really matter. It's kind of how many people are viewing my videos, and yep. because the videos are getting thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seven thousand views, and pe I can see in the comments people are enjoying it, mm. I might already be at that place. I might already be at that place where I'm like, hey, I can live my life sustainably. Super happy. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I haven't, I've never thought about this now. Cause as you just said, no YouTubers have these kind of conversations. It doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but mm -hmm. it may already be that if if I can continue that for GT7 and I can, can I, if I can make videos, you know, if I maybe spend, I don't know, three days, three nights a week making videos and or streaming and... Yeah. I'm attracting that many viewers. And for me, it's always been a creative process. So I like creating and I like the fact that, so what gives me the buzz is that I put something out there and I know people are going to watch it. That 
I I enjoy that. Um, I may already be there. I don't know. I don't. I don't need lots of um, paying members because I'm very lucky. I don't really need that kind of support. Although it's, it's grateful because it always goes into the channel. Mm. I don't need big subscriber numbers. Although I I really appreciate it and it is important because it gives you access to sponsors and partners and gets you mm. on the table. So if I had more subscribers, possibly I would have got a G7 code. I don't have lots of subscribers, so I didn't. Um, but the most important thing for me is about the views. And I think it's the, fir- only, it's the first time I've ever kind of transcended into making content that has been really kind of broken through view-wise. Because yep. before it's always been, hey, if something is, is in the low thousands, that's great. A lot of stuff mm-hmm. isn't going to make it past a thousand views. You know, you can look at my iRacing content now is is in the same space as my Grand Turismo content was previously, which is... You know, a lot of it doesn't get to a thousand views. The streams might get one thousand, two thousand, three thousand on a good night views, and it's kind of in that space. But to get when you get in the tens of thousands of views fairly consistently, I absolutely cannot complain. And it doesn't really get bigger than that. You know, I'm never going to be someone who's going to get in the millions because I'm not a company, and yeah. I can't commit that kind of time. Um, and I'm YouTube. I feel as a platform has become becoming more corporate as it goes on so you have these big platforms like you know traction who are owned by motorsport network 300 million dollar company you've got overtake.gg owned by porsche multi-billion dollar company you've got like racing games.gg again another collect company collective and that's the competition really for for viewers because remember youtube in my um opinion is is a, a very much a viewer platform they want to put the right yeah. content into the view. It's not about being fair to creators. So it doesn't matter if you have these companies kind of paying people around the globe to pump out content and paying other content creators to make stuff for them. So I'm yeah. never gonna I'm never gonna be able to keep, compete with them. Um so yeah, I may already be there. I don't know. And that would that would be a happy place for me. Because it's kind of you, nice to think about, really. It, it's yeah, I mean I, I don't know if I'm there yet. G seven may come out and I may it release you, some, and it yeah. might just may not be relevant <laughs> in terms of the algorithm. Or actually, maybe I've had a particular energy for the run up to GT7 because all these developments and reporting on them and thinking about it. And actually, when it comes to the grind of racing again, maybe I don't have that same kind of energy. I don't know. Mm. But this has be, definitely been a window into kind of, hey, this is, I really enjoy this and I'm very happy there. And I don't need more of anything. If it just carried on like this, I'd be very happy. <laughs> but yeah it's, no, um... that's awesome I, I think it's harder for for uh sim racing content as well because there isn't like that many games that come out mm. you know what i mean you you got your staples acc i racing i guess we'll throw gran turismo sport in there as as well um definitely for the competitive scene it's very these are the staples and nothing nothing much changes so it is harder to be creative i think to think, keep that fire burning yeah exactly i think it's hard to keep that fire burning and sustain it because there's not that many creators who have just lost in sim racing you've got mm. jimmy and steve because they've been doing it like seven eight whatever years you know you've got the people on twitch but and the formula one games actually just just come into mind they, they get a lot of stuff don't they they do they do yeah um but still i think i think there's there's not like one of the hardest things about i think being a sim racing youtube creator is and will be longevity like sustainability because yeah you can be really into a game and like stay up late every night making videos and content and still wake up early in the morning and you know kind of have that energy but what about if you have to get into a real grind um it's not like being a first person shooter gamer because there's always a new game coming out and you you always you know get that refreshment and then you know push from the companies to kind of they want to push content you know, Gran Turismo 7 might be the game that's here for the next four or five years. You know, mm. are you going to be able to sustain yourself doing that? And that's where you have to, in my opinion, you have to say people, credit people like Key, who can just do it day in, day out. Mm. <laughs> day in, day out. Just do it, consistently grow the channel and, you know, offer value to, to the viewers. But yeah. when you look at people like myself, Ollie, Rory, we all started, I think, kind of midway through the GT Sports cycle. Mm. And we've all you know, are we going to be able to sustain it? I don't know. It's interesting because you're you're the only one out of three of us who's really take 
taken that bold step to to say hey i'm gonna have a i'm gonna have a break <laughs> i'm gonna take a step back <laughs> and in the long run that might prove to be a really smart move you know isn't because that scary though isn't the, the thought of taking a break well no well that's well, I mean, that's another conversation well, no well, it? Te- tell it was it scary what did you think did you oh. think hang on what's going to happen to my members what's going to happen to my subscribers i think the the biggest thing was the the feeling of letting people down so like you say the people who pay monthly who support and there's a fair few of them who have i have i didn't create anything for like a month and a half and there's still people who are, are paying and they were like hey you know I, I i sent a message on the community thing i said hey i'm not going to be creating content for a while like a heads up cancel your su- subscription because it you're paying for nothing basically <laughs> and there was a there was loads of people who were like no we'll, we'll i'm gonna like leave it open there's like a little carrot on the end of the no, but I th- yeah i think like, i think pe- back. our viewers and supporters are very smart probably one of the smartest mm-hmm. communities out there and i think they will have known that they'll keep supporting you because you're going to come back <laughs> The bug, the bug is yeah. in him. He's, he's never leaving him. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I think that was the biggest thing is 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 that feeling of letting people down. Um. And it was a hard decision. I I always thought that. You know that same question that I asked you of like making it or what is making it to you. you no, know, I think for the longest time making it is super GT level, Jimmy Broadbent level. They have made it. They are able to create a piece of content hundreds of thousands of yeah. views you know, that feeds them for a couple of weeks that one video or whatever it is you know what i mean um no, so when you get to the point where it's like oh this is not happening i've been doing it for like three and a half years but there's people out there who've been doing it for god knows how long like tigeny has been at it since yeah you know, long, time. long time um and there's loads of people who've been doing that but i think that was the that's the biggest thing is letting people down and like, hey, I just need to step away, refresh the old batteries. Mm-hmm. And it mixture with life as well, like a master's course, mm-hmm. actual like full time work as well. That because I'm in America, that's I actually work during prime time, yeah. which is evening in <laughs> Europe. So it's like, I've, you know, it just doesn't. I always think like something is out to get me when obviously it isn't, but it's like, Oh, I'm having a really good stream. Camera dice. I'm doing this. Something else happens. I was like, you know what? Everything seems to be just world is the universe is telling me to take a step back. That's mm. what I'm going to do. And I had a really great January. Sat back. I got a new Xbox. Um, so like Game Pass. I played Halo, Forza Horizon Five. I'm playing through. Um, that is the weird thing about being consecrated, right? You actually don't play a lot of games. <laughs> no, and and that's always been a thing for me. Is like I want to play other games, so I'm playing through the new Horizon Forbidden West mm-hmm. game, which is just absolutely incredible, and I'm having such a good time just like playing it on my own. But there's always the bit of me that goes, if I'm playing it, I might as well stream it mm-hmm. so people can watch. But I'm like, oh, this is that's why my January was so good. Mm-hmm. I just it's something for myself you do you as a content creator you're creating stuff for other people do you think do you think you have more confidence now to yourself, but... if you need to do that in the future you can be like hey i'm taking february off because you've yeah. done done it and yeah I if think you haven't done it it's very it, scary huh and when you take that break you think this is going to damage my my uh, channel my numbers my everything when you stop caring about that like <laughs> i don't care about that anymore i was saying this Hi, sorry. Um, when I was I was saying this to uh, CJ Mac last night when I was doing a podcast with him, is um, oh my god, I have the worst memory. A fly completely interrupted my whole thought process. You were worried this about is... the views going down, but then you realised it didn't matter. Yes, so I don't really care. We were talking about the music in Gran Turismo Sport. There we go, man. Senior moment. Jesus, thirty one now. Um, like the. The problem with the music on Gran Turismo Sport is that it gets copyrighted, doesn't it, on yeah. YouTube. I'm going to play the music on my live streams when I play it. One, that'll be something different. Two, yeah, I'll get like demonetized for it. I'm, I'm not even going to click, like, this is monetized. I think people can still super chat to you on live streams. I think that's how it works. But, I like, think, yeah, I think it's ad revenue. revenue. I don't care. I really don't care. Like, hey, take the money. 
I'm, I don't care. I want people to have the best experience. But like before that, I haven't played Gran Turismo Sport with the music on for three years. <laughs> because you can't. Because I feel... <laughs> or you yeah, can't. This is like, not the done thing. Yeah. Like, oh, I want that 20 freaking pence. I want it. I want it every... Like, I don't care. So I think when you're deciding to take a break, you've really got to be like, I'm okay with it. And you've got to make that decision. So if I were to have another break, I'd be like, hey, I'm taking a break. You know, I'm getting... I'm having my wedding with Dylan in August. Mm. I'm going to be... Completely <laughs> off Not for two weeks. Shuttling those videos. Whatever. <laughs> it's it's one like, of those things. Just... Maybe YouTube should actually recommend it because I know on my channel YouTube's been like, on my dashboard saying, "Hey, your views are massively up because you've been <laughs> uploading more videos. Keep at it." And like, okay, Do great, it. that's a bit Keep weird. It. And you're like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But I wonder <laughs> if YouTube should actually be like, "Hey, we've." I, they, I don't know how they know because it's all automated. But we're like, hey. Maybe you should take a break for March or something. We've noticed the tone of your voice. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> through the algorithm. <laughs> um, but so yeah, something like that, you know, oh, there's, I actually, there probably should be some kind of encouragement to pop up once in a while being like, hey, have you taken a break recently? You know, yeah. just, you know, if you're happy uploading, that's great, but just to let you know if you want to take, or something like that. Um, but it is a big worry that, and I, I, I suspect, and you've gone through this and come out the other side, but I suspect is because if you take any sort of mini break, i.e. if you're particularly lazy or you go on holiday or something, you do see your yeah. views decrease, right? And then yeah. you're like, oh, well, I need to increase them. But I suspect if you properly take a break and they decrease and then they just sit where they're going to sit, you probably have that moment of clarity and like, okay, well, the world hasn't ended. Channel's still going. And so I'm having a great it, time. it comes back to, I did a, I think I did a stream last week, two hours. So when at the height of whatever, two hour stream, over a thousand views, a thousand to two thousand, this one got three hundred views. Mm. And if I like like if I was in that headspace of, oh that really matters, or oh, why should I do it? I'm not getting the views. Am I good enough? Whew, into that freaking spiral. Yeah. It's an issue. But when I come back and it's like, oh, three hundred views, great. I had a great time, spoke to some people. Um, that I haven't seen in a while. Just had fun. I'm happy with that. So yeah. it's it's about finding what makes you happy. The analytics and the numbers. I don't 100%. care. You know, when you say about um, what makes you happy is knowing people are happy mm. watching your stuff. And I think that's that's the the place where every content creator has to be. Yeah. Like, genuinely be happy with. No, I completely agree. If you're purely chasing analytics and not either considering your happiness or your viewers' happiness, or ideally both, then yeah. it's a very dangerous game just comparing numbers. And yeah, it's when you think about are oh, my audience happy, and you definitely feel that connection with live streaming. Um, you know, for example, I did that stream last night about Ukraine, which is an area that I've never done before, but I spoke wow. with my mods and we decided to do it. And I've never, I've never had an end of a stream like it. Everyone was just so incredibly positive, and I've never had so many thank yous for doing this stream ever. Um, yeah. And I don't know what the views were. It's kind of a bit irrelevant because it's in a different area, but uh -huh. um, it made me feel good. It made me feel like that's the that's the cool thing that drives me. It's like, hey, people really enjoyed that. Yeah. You know, I sat here and out of thin air created some entertainment. Or some reassurance, or some companionship, yep. or whatever. And it's really positive. Like you're doing it for the right reason. It's yeah. like, hey, I'm interested in this topic. I think talking about it will help other people be informed, get interested about it as well. And I think that's really cool. So yes, yeah, so I think that is sensible. So it's, it's your stories are interesting that you've had those moments that you've been very candid about in terms of like being frustrated about numbers, mm. like super GT moment and 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 the like the, the streams like um you know exploding and then not carrying on like that but then you've also you've taken this break and it feels like maybe that is you've had to deal with numbers going down <laughs> you've just you've had to deal with it and then you've you fully accepted it and you're almost certainly going to be in a better place in terms of just being more relaxed and happier and and that is i'm sure going to actually ironically re result in your numbers going up because you're going to be more kind of relaxed your viewers and whatnot they're going to recognize that whereas if you were someone who was so concerned 
And I'm sure there's some streamers who are always streaming and keeping an eye on their on their numbers. I'm hundred percent sure they're probably streamers well, yeah, like I that. Think it's, I think it's impossible not to to some extent. Well, no, it, oh, it, you can hide number your number. Green? Okay, yeah, yeah. You okay. can hide your number. You can. Mm. Oh, oh yeah, when I screen. stream, I, I hide it on yeah. OBS now. I don't. I I want to be the same as I would to two people to two hundred. Like, yeah, it's just. And I, I've, I'm in terms of longevity and sustainability and improving your content. I 100 percent subscribe to that being the way to do it. If you just follow numbers, what if you're having a, what if you're driving really well, and you're in a great mood, but for whatever reason your numbers are low, because mm. let's hypothetically say Super GT is streaming that night on GT Sports, so your numbers mm. are low, and what are you going to do? You're going to get angry at yourself. You're going to get angry at. Are you going to get angry at the people mm. who haven't to watch you? Because that, but I'm sure there are people that think that way. But I really think that's a dangerous way to think because you don't control those things. All you control is how mm. you are feeling, the content you're putting out, the kind of whatever trying to value you're trying to provide you to a audience watching. And you don't. I think control that's a really things. interesting point. Is because I I like to set goals and I I want to you know do, yeah you, you yeah. do that as well. And if you have any goals for the rest of the year I, I would like to know that um or even if that's the way that you think but like i'm like okay and, and i don't do this any anymore but like i was like okay january i want 100 new subscribers i want this many and dylan my wife she said not in control of that like why why would you even put that as a goal when not in control of that uh, and i think that comes back to your point like when you yep. measure yourself to metrics that you don't have control over. I never told you, but I always felt that you were putting yourself a bit of a hostage fortune by having those very strict goals in terms of mm. your morning coffee streams and like this is where we want to get to. And mm. it's, there, there are lots of pros in terms of letting your community know, hey, this is what I want to achieve. So if you want to support mm. me, we can do this together and bring people on journey. But yeah, I completely agree with your wife <laughs> that you don't ultimately you don't control it. <laughs> And I, I do, your question to me, I don't really have, I've never really had those kind of goals. I always, mm -hmm. when I was getting close to 10,000 subscribers, I always wanted to go over 10,000. And now I'm over 10,000. It's kind of like, okay, there's an extra digit, which is very nice. Mm -hmm. It makes you more, gives you more like legitimacy or whatever. Like, I don't know what the word is, but um, I don't, not particularly bothered now um, because I'm not going to get another digit. 90,000 subscribers so I'm in that another digit land um, but yeah I think it is dangerous and there are good times and there are downtimes I think right now is a really good time for sim racing generally I've seen everyone seems to be getting good views it's great the more people that get good views the more new people are being brought in my video might get suggested to them so 100% the bigger it gets for other people is is great for everyone I find um, but sometimes the views are low and I remember there are times in GC Sport where I was thinking hang on you know, Rory's putting a video out. It's not getting a thousand views. So hang on, how am I meant to, how am I meant to kind yeah. of grow? Um, but that's just that's just the way it is. So yeah, I I think it's dangerous to think like that. It's very easy to say and very kind of like cheesy, but it's like if the content's good, people come to it. But it's it it's like if the content comes, people may come to it. There's not much else you can do. They may mm. come to it. They may not. It depends on the algorithm. But ultimately, there's not really much more you can do because you don't control it so and your good content is different to the people who are watching it i exactly. think personally my favorite piece of content that i've ever made is a jump scare compilation from like outlast playing outlast i think that's the funniest thing and yes i'm laughing at myself <laughs> i think that's the best content i've ever made mm. like the way that i chopped it up and diced it up and that's got nothing to do with sim racing or anything yeah. like that but i i think that was the best and i only got like 300 views if, or something if you're passionate about your craft that makes you happy like now you're remembering it and this makes you feel happy because as mm -hmm. a as a content creator and i actually don't like the word content creator the only word i like of that is creator but as a creator we are creative and putting stuff out then that you have to look after yourself in that way um yeah it's interesting obviously this isn't a live stream so um but it'd be interesting to know in the comments if people have thought about these things viewers have thought about these things and or well, this is brand new because obviously we see both sides of the coin. We see the finished products and we also, mm. it's like an iceberg, right? The top of the iceberg is a finished product and loads of it below the sea is making it. And yep. um, 
ultimately, whilst it's not really, I would say, a business for a lot of us, it is a massive investment of time. And that's arguably more important because there's other things you could be doing with that time. And we commit a lot of time to this like passion. Um, so we don't really how, want to waste it. How much time do you spend a week on content? I don't okay. know. So on average, I can average. make I can make a I can make a solid video in two hours, including rendering it, uploading it, thumbnail, everything. So mm. there's a lot of times I'll just come up 10 p.m., 10 till midnight, make a video, and then schedule it to come on the next day. So I probably spend less time than it might appear. I don't know. Streaming. Back in the day when I was doing it more regularly G support was always interesting because either I wouldn't do any practice and therefore I wouldn't be as good um, fast at the beginning of the stream. I've got to change my battery in a second. Um, <laughs> or I would spend time doing practice and qualifying because the way G support works and then suddenly you're adding like half an hour onto your stream. So, And a stream, I normally stream for about three hours. So I don't know. Let's say, let's say I stream on average three times a week. Let's say that's 10 hours. And then let's say I spend three nights a week making video. Let's say about, let's say maybe 16, 18 hours. That's completely rough time, rough mm. estimate. Let's say 16, 18 hours a week, um, which is an average of, you know, two and a bit a day. Um, so yeah, that's two and a, two and a bit hours a day that, I used to play I used to play football and rugby three times a week and it would take me forty five minutes each way to get to the pitches, be there for two hours, come back, and that kind of stuff I don't do anymore. So that that is a sacrifice. Um and therefore yeah, you don't want to just put content into the void. You don't want to just put content out there to die and flop. <laughs> so <laughs> because you think, Oh hang on, was that worth it? Um uh -huh. So it, that's why we we're always interesting in in the analytics and what we should be doing and um yeah it's and I I've I don't know that's the thing about if you again if you go to that structured way of doing it and you like I'm going to stream Monday Wednesday Friday you know three hours a week uh, three hours each mm -hmm. time then you can do you can kind of work around it but either which way it's still it's still a commitment like. The iceberg is definitely, you don't see all of the work in terms of the finished product is a very mm. small portion of how long it takes to do it, especially in sim racing where it probably takes longer to actually get the content to create the video a lot of the time. You have to go through yeah. races, not every race is a good race. I think, so. with Gran Turismo Sport, you have the, the, the daily races, which are like really good. Then you have the, you look at league racing, which is so important to uh, a lot of people and that's been something that they haven't been able to do because of the schedule like league racing yeah. is usually in the evening time in Europe I can't do any league racing like I was part of uh, the distinct formerly via, via, via Lex, like esports Your team, team. <laughs> I could do nothing. I could do nothing because I could never race in any league because I was working. Mm. I worked at the time all the races were at. So it was like the reason where I left. I was like, guys, I'm not doing anything. I can't do anything. Nothing's going to change. So, but it's so, interesting because I think you, you kind of, you have a big European following, but there is also a US scene talking about Cyrus, people like that. So mm. do you... Do you feel like you identify more with the European scene, like Super GT and Ollie and me and Rory? Or yeah, I think so. Is there a reason for that? But I think the majority of YouTube creators are European. Look at Cyrus, and there's a lot. There's loads of um, guys who are on Twitch as well. There's, I think, the Twitch GT Sport community is is expanding there, and even on Facebook, the couple of people who I know on Facebook are American as well. Um, I, I think just the time of day that I'm able to stream, like, is more European. So I've I've always sort of thought about that. I'm not going to do it in the evening. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to... The way that my job works with 
But Dylan's job is she works in the day, I work in the evening, and then I come home. That's your time. Like at like nine PM. I'm not gonna go I haven't seen you all day. Yeah. I'm gonna <laughs> play video games for a couple of hours. Well, you like just sit and stare at the back yeah. of my head. Like that's not And it wouldn't be prime not, time anyway. I, okay. And then th- that's the thing, everyone in, in Europe is asleep, so um I think I think that's another thing. You've got to have that balance, haven't you? Like Rory's Rory's big thing is, hey, father, husband, mm. a part time sim racer. And I think you've got to find your place in the world, find your balance. And I think that's something that I've always struggled with because when I started creating content, I was in university and I didn't, you know, it's, <laughs> I'm it's playing games or university. What, what one are you going to choose when you, when, when you don't have any really pressure on you yeah i mean i'll pass my courses but that's what you've got you haven't got anyone telling you or anyone to like is counting on you and stuff like that so you've got other external factors to think about you gotta you gotta take them into consideration yeah it's funny the time the time is an interesting one it's something that every part-time youtuber has to work out one way or another um and i don't think I don't think there's that much of a difference between part-time YouTubers and full-time YouTubers. I think there's a big difference between part-time YouTubers and these kind of um, corporate organizations on YouTube that can employ multiple people, multiple time zones to produce content. I think that's going to that's gonna be where you're going to see a difference because your part-time YouTuber can only create so much content because they've only got so many hours. But these kind of corporate organizations will be able to just churn out like multiple videos a day and mm. and swamp it if they want. So I'm interested and to see even, how that plays even, out. Yeah. Even you saying that, one like piece of content that I wanted was I was gonna change my Twitch channel, have different people stream. So it was just like a collective. Yeah, yeah. I actually changed the name to the racing collective. Yeah. And I just wanted like someone to come in and stream there. And that's exposure for them, and they yeah. go. But like to have that's talking the same as you is just like one place where you have all of this stuff. And well, I think that's going to be oh. the battleground. And you know, it's no secret that mm. you know I've started my own esports team, and I wanted to ask you about that as well. How that's going? Yeah, it's going. It's going great. And you know, it's it's great to support fast drivers and. You know, support through competitions, but it's also a lot of the people that we support are budding content creators, and you know, it's kind of a fight fire with fire thing as well for the for these big platforms. I, you know, I don't know if it's, I don't know if the Super GT model is going to going to be that achievable for a lot of people, because in you know, the platforms always changing, and we always kind of. It's a bit like, you know, like light from the sun takes aim aimants to get here. We're kind of looking at these things like years behind they really happened. Like Super GT mm. and Jimmy built these followings when YouTube was a lot less developed in the sim racing space. There's a lot less competition. And if you're if someone's watching now thinking, hey, I want to be like Super GT, hey, the game's changed. <laughs> you know, that's probably yeah. not going to happen. You look at the content that they're making right now, like Super GT is heavily within... Uh, the quadrant stuff yeah, yeah. and jimmy broadbent is like racing with praga and they're both involved with so like, i think Grand you have Turismo. to co- collaborate more you have to partner more i i mm. i'll go out and say it now i don't think 100 percent you you could, anyone can make a super gt level on your own it's not going to happen anymore it doesn't matter how charismatic mm. you are or good you are i just don't think that is viable because you know the content from everyone is the the bar for content is much higher in terms of quality. Sorry, mm. and um, I went to hit my mute button there and I missed it, so I just coughed anyway. Um, the bar <laughs> for content is is much higher, and there's just a lot more of it. So, and there's, you only have so many hours in a day. You got twenty four hours in a day. You got to sleep, work, do other stuff, and mm. then you got time to do your content creation. Um, so I'm a bit surprised I haven't seen more collaboration. But you know, it's hard to do with racing. It is hard to. It's, it's, it's hard it's, to do. It's interesting that you 
you had that um you changed your, your twitching to that because i didn't know anyone else who was doing something like that but also you started this podcast that you were doing yesterday um mm. and you know I, i've started the esports team and we've got the community racing team titchney's also got a community racing team and yeah i saw that as well, i'm interested yeah. to see how other people are going to move because i feel like this is such an innovative space and there's no playbook we're like we're at the forefront of time we're not following an example of where people have been before really because i think the super gt and jimmy model is very is like doesn't exist anymore really so how the story goes i don't know but all i know is there are these big companies on youtube that are pushing a lot of content out producing it at a very high quality having people on payroll to do that around the globe and kind of it's not about one video every three days it's about three videos every day if that makes sense that's mm. the new model so. and talking about like collaboration and stuff what was so like awesome about the whole team rock thing like when you first started that i was like yeah let's go this is awesome like i'm watching these guys like bounce off each other and you don't really get that in the sim racing space because you look at like a, a call of duty or something like that like you've got content creators playing with each other and because they're on uh their pcs they yeah. have a button where they could they could be talking to the uh their friends and then they click it and it mutes it yeah, and then yeah. it goes to whatever that, that's a little bit harder to do when you're racing and yeah it's like, you, it's like you're driving and then you have to press a button or something and uh just more yeah, I, 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 I guess i'm a bit in a way i'm a bit surprised that we didn't see more teams popping up mm. but in another way and i think probably it's you know ollie and rory will have felt this more for me it was just a great i was a tiny channel less than a thousand subscribers when i was in team rock which is insane and mm. so it was just kind of a whirlwind for me but i think for rory and ollie i suspect it never really took off kind of as much as they was wanted it never really propelled them slash us to kind of jimmy levels for example do you think it's because they could believe that it's you know, if you're splitting up a nine-hour race into three, and each platform, no, I don't, I don't think so. I, it, so they're I, losing I, views. No, or... I don't think so. That was a contentious issue, as everyone knows. But I don't think so. I think it's just we never really had. You know, like you talk about that um, World War Z moment on Twitch, or just algorithm in your favor. I feel like we it, that just never we never kind of got to be like, and I'm I'm sure the the audience generally is there i don't know if the audience was really there on youtube but obviously when jimmy streams i racing you know wow. nowadays we're talking i don't know what it is probably four five six seven eight thousand concurrent and wow. so we were doing this in beginning of 2021 right uh like in the pandemic and looking back i suspect that you know probably there was an opportunity to kind of get plus thousand concurrents and we never got plus a thousand concurrent, so we never kind of transcended where anyone really was. Obviously, I so was way below all of it. That everyone has, for example, two hundred, two hundred, two hundred, and that would be six. No, no, no. Like, I'm saying in any one of our streams, we never hit a concurrent thousand. If that makes sense, because mm. we always have run Team Rock. You know, one stream, as you know, goes into another stream, and normally yeah. always built and built and built. And so we used to rotate the streams around, so it was fair to everyone. Um. Yeah. But we never at, at one point ever had a thousand people watching. I think I had a stream with Ollie once at um, Le Mans where we had about 700. So we got close. But I really do feel like if, and I've, I've only thought about this looking back at the time, I just didn't, these numbers didn't mean anything to me because I had 800 subscribers. So it may be a bit awesome. like your World War Z <laughs> moment. It's like, it's like, okay, that's great. But okay, um, don't really understand the significance yet. It's only with the passage of time, you're like, oh, they were really big numbers, weren't they? Um, yeah. But I do feel like if we if we'd gone over a thousand, we might have transcended a little bit. We might have been invited to races or whatnot. Yeah. And um, yeah, we might have seen more people doing something similar, and therefore we might have sparked a wave of collaboration. And ultimately, Team Rock was so so good for us. It was so so good for our communities. It brought our communities together. It was a great thing we did, really especially cool in the that. pandemic. Um, and that's great, but things it didn't do was propel anyone in that collective to kind of like 
you know, 100,000 subscribers or plus 1,000 concurrents or lead to kind of invitations to, um, you know, big events. Or you disappointed by that, or, you, or no? I was no, I never even thought about this stuff. Never even thought about stuff. It was only when kind of uh, we had you know um, Ollie leaving. I was thinking about okay, kind of what was going well, what wasn't going well. But at the time, um, for me, it was just crazy because. But by the way, at the time, I didn't really know what I was doing in i racing. So the whole <laughs> thing was like every race. I didn't even care about the numbers because I'm just trying to drive and not crash drive. the car. Yeah. Um, so it was very much a whirlwind. Um, and I'm not sure how much weight I could pull anyway for me because I had 800 mm. subscribers. Though I had a very, 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 still have a very, very passionate community. Um, but, you know, I, I, can, I can look back and see that, yeah, definitely there was an opportunity there that if the winds had gone, I'm not saying we did anything wrong. Um I've never, I've never, I don't, not say we didn't think wrong, but it's like if the winds had gone in our favor, if there was one time we were streaming and YouTube just pushed us to like the front page, for example, mm. I felt like the content was good, the banter was really good, it was accessible. Ollie and I were very new to wire racing, so we, I think, um, connected very well with the audience, bringing the audience with us. Yep. And Rory had that role of the person who's kind of been there and done it and guiding us through it. Yeah, yep. so, yeah so it was a great <laughs> setup. And I'm, I think it. anyone watching who was vaguely interested in racing, real racing or sim racing, would have really enjoyed it. And a lot of people did. So, but I can see how maybe that... I don't know if Ollie and Rory kind of expected it would do better or not. I don't know. But ultimately, I think we did it. You know, it probably feels like a lot longer, but I think we did it for four months as a, as a, as a three-piece. And I raced with Ollie every week for like all of those months like we raced together every weekend i think we raced together 19 times in a row so a lot of times we actually did it on saturday and sunday so we really went for it so a little bit there was a, a big part of that and obviously charlie roscoe as well um you know he's he was a little bit bigger than your channel but i think his on and off sort of content creation yeah journey I, i'm sure he, he found very similar uh opinions to you yeah well me, me and charlie were, yeah we were the smaller channel so i think when i'm saying me i think i was probably speaking a bit for charlie it's kind of yeah great but we weren't necessarily thinking about growth or kind of anything like that because it's just very cool to be part of it um mm. but you know yeah possibly it possibly it could have been a bit bigger i don't know and i felt like we could have handled it i felt like we were ready for it to hit more than a thousand people concurrently um i'm not sure i think the only person who's been close i think ollie has been close to a thousand i'm not sure if ollie went over a thousand i think at daytona a few weeks ago he went close maybe he got 800 or something might have yeah um i, I, yeah, the... I, I vaguely think that there was a picture maybe it was either 800 or 1100 i can't something like that. that but i think the fact that it's now 2022 so it's like a year later than we start Team Rock and mm. like we're still not, none of us are still there. It shows that maybe it's just the audience isn't there for like to get those numbers on YouTube for like eye racing, like plus thousand concurrence, unless you're Jimmy. Um, yep. I don't know, but I can't remember what the original question was, but this is just having a conversation. <laughs> but it's kind of, yeah, Team, team Rock, absolutely fantastic and it's still something that I really look forward to driving with Charlie and Rory. Definitely the first mm. four months or first five months with the four of us was a really unique experience. And like I said at the time, you know, we were very lucky because of the situation with the pandemic. And I felt like we really entertained people when they literally couldn't leave their homes. And um, at the time Molly left, it was changing because lockdowns were ending and it was going into the summer. And I'd always been quite pragmatic and like, you know, you know, I want to go outside, people want to go outside. So I, I don't think we're going to have the same kind of like um, context with it. Um, yeah. And it's now in a slightly different place because we don't hit it that hard, but we do big special events and they feel like big special events because yeah. they're not they're not so frequent to them or special. Um, special, yeah. And 
yeah it's an interesting one it definitely i don't i think it may be an interesting question is whether team team rock how it affected my channel i've never really thought too much about it because my community is always my community was there before team rock um it's a very strong tight-knit community because we were playing gran turismo during the pandemic and doing a lot of lobbies together and really growing together and discord is is massive right it's the biggest discord out of anyone in team rock um mm. but the if i hadn't been doing team rock would i have done as much i racing no um so i would have done more gt sport which view wise might do better but i think it would be more grindy so i think yeah. team rock just doing that i racing and open that side to me and just making our racing fun is just not only be good for my community my channel it's also just been good for my kind of like don't know what the word is like appetite and excitement for racing because it's given me more variety yeah. um now i can just race with my mates as well and big special events it's very cool we trust mm -hmm. each other you know we have really good fun on streams because we you know we can poke each other because we're close if that makes sense um ah. So yeah, I'm very lucky with the whole Team Rock thing, and the, the yeah question marks about whether it could have really popped in those first five months because I never felt like it really. Looking back now, looking back now, I'm a bit bigger, and I can see it more through the lens of say Ollie and Rory. You know, the numbers were big for me then. <laughs> the numbers were crazy because I was down here, but now I'm kind of mm. a little bit higher. I could be like, oh yeah, I could see how this could have got over a thousand. We were ready. But that's just that's just the algorithm. That's just like you know, the winds of time, and we put ourselves. You know, like we did a nineteen week. Well, I streamed nineteen times in a row with with Ollie. Most of them with Rory as well. Some of them with Charlie, yeah. and we put ourselves there. And it was good content. People enjoyed it. And yeah, maybe we could have got pushed to trending or something, but you know, we didn't, and that's fine. We're not entitled to it. And. um you know it's great content to make but that's that i think encapsulates the point about just things that are not in your control because yeah. i think people that watch team rock were like yeah this is great this is really i haven't seen i've never seen anything like this i've never mm. seen anything like no, sim races yeah, yeah sharing streams and engaging like this is that's not the done thing the done thing is you just sit there and you race by yourself and that's great but that's in a way has two dimensions where this was a a three-dimensional kind of thing very unpredictable as well the way we would interact with each other how the races would develop um and yeah i don't know i mean it's a very interesting thing i i feel like it could i feel like if it had popped like you were saying on your world war z stream i feel like we would have really run with that because yeah. there was so much energy at that time from absolutely everyone it really was and commitment yeah. hitting it every weekend saturday and sunday most weekends so we really would have just rode whatever train um mm -hmm. yeah it was great for a long time the biggest stream on my channel ever was was the nurburgring stream which was in april 2021 with over ten thousand views and that was the first part of that race that wasn't the third part so Assuming yeah. each part was equal views that, and probably the others got more views actually, that's talking at least 40,000 views over the course of the race, which is really big numbers. That is really big numbers. Um, but not quite like that big pop. I don't know. Not quite that big pop. I think that Nurburgring. searching for the big pop. That Nurburgring one's uh, peaked at 500 views. Um, which was by far the biggest views I'd ever got. So again, my perspective at the time was like, this is insane. Um, mm. But I can see how as a collective, yeah, maybe, maybe we could have popped more, but I don't think it was in our control. Now, all we'd need on YouTube is a raid feature. That's all we need. Yeah, we do. I tried to do perfect, it the other day. Just perfect would that be? Just to click it and, you, and you're done. I think the thing, oh. that was always a contentious thing in kind of, you know, the the stream swap and we still do it um and i think a lot of the contention out of it would have been removed if there had been a raid feature because there would be no friction um and yeah you you do always lose viewers when you swap the streams that's a fact 
you know, mm. but you gain views as well because you more notifications going out to that subscriber base and whatnot. But you do always mm. lose viewers. Um, but yeah, the raid feature should hundred percent be a thing. I don't. I'm, yeah. There should be a lot of things that should be a thing in YouTube stream. But the raid. I think feature, um, gifted subs is supposed to be coming this year. They are coming. Point. Yeah, they say. I'm interested to so, see how they because I'm. Um, they're coming, but I don't think gifted sub. I think culturally, that sort of stuff in terms of subs and bits is really embedded in Twitch. I'm not sure hmm. whether it's a, it's a really a cultural YouTube thing. Um, no, I think I think what they've got to do is they've got to take from Twitch. Yeah, because what's what? You, yeah, you've got to uh, make the sub more stuff. You've got to make the sub more. What it's not. You've got to make the membership have more additions to it. I think. Um, more like integrations, like Twitch has, and um, but yeah, that'd be interesting. I think gift, yeah, gifted subs are coming. I think the raiding is coming, and there's a few other features like I think like duetting and stuff like that will come as well. Yeah. So and and it's that it's that thing of YouTube is really good for videos and live stream Twitch. Yeah. Is live streaming yeah, yeah that's and it's really good at it. really good at it not so much the discovery stuff but it's just the live streaming it's it's the best isn't it mm. but so you just gotta learn right? but obviously is that youtube's is that what youtube is i don't know <laughs> we will see it's gonna be exciting yeah i don't know what the time is but i know it's gone dark and my recording thing says Ooh. an hour and a half. So, good job I cleared my uh, recording drive. <laughs> I ran out of space. So, I think we should probably wrap it up. And I've got fi- one more question for you. Okay. I've got one more question for you. What do you think the Metacritic of GT7 is going to be? <clears throat> I think it would be... Do you, want, do you want some background information? Because I was Go talking on. about this yesterday. So, the first Grand is most bought at 96 mm. out of 100. I think... Second one was 91, no, 93. Third, 95. 84, 89. 85 was 83 or 81. GT Sport it was 83 and then GT6 was 81, I think. GT Sport was 75. Yeah, uh, I, th- I uh, think it will be above 80. I mean, I'm not really... the mm. What the Metacritic... What the review is that going to Metacritic aggregation we're looking for is not really what necessarily me or probably my audience is looking for um right. i can imagine the reviews for gc sport were like hey the single player mode is really bare bones and whatnot so we're going to dot points mm. um how can you really give a review of an online competitive esports game if you were a general review for a magazine so i think g7 yeah. will just review a lot more favorably i reckon it'll be above 80 um but again i don't think i think it's going to be interesting reading a lot of the reviews having spent so much time you know i think i spent 500 hours playing grand Turismo sport last year because i reckon the reviews are going to look a little bit amateurish to me a lot of them the way they talk about things because our understanding of the game yeah. is is a lot more developed so yeah i think plus 80 yeah i don't know i think i think they're just gonna like absolutely love the way it looks oh. and how they're how it's a throwback to like first grand Turismo. i think it's going to be pretty high I th- i think we could we could see a 90, but it doesn't really matter, does it? Because it does single player stuff, <laughs> yeah. they, they're going to go to sport mode, aren't they? You know? Yeah, it doesn't so... matter. And arguably, say that Metacritic is, becomes less relevant the, the bigger a game is in terms of streaming and everything because you just see what it's like mm-hmm. to play. You can ask the streamer questions, hey, what's this, what's that? And do you, do you value that more than a reviewer who, a professional reviewer who will be reviewing a lot of games but not, won't be in depth in any of them? Or do you go to a streamer who, will be really in depth in that game. Um I don't know. But yeah, hour and a hour and a half, which is Amazing. way longer. But hopefully this just goes up on cut. So if you have <laughs> any questions for either of us, put them in the comments. James is running a podcast as well. I don't know if you want to plug your podcast. Yeah, it went up today. It's on uh my YouTube channel. I don't know what it's gonna be called yet. We haven't come up with a name. It was just the pilot episode, but we were talking about of things gt7 related it's me and cj mac 92 who streams over on twitch um 
yeah, that went live. Have a listen. See what see what you think. We're going to try and make it as as often as possible. Next episode's going to be after the Gran Turismo Seven launch, and you know, any predictions that we had, did we get them right? Whatever. It's 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 good crack. And like we said earlier, like indie sport creators don't really yeah. talk to each other that much. So it was like before I started talking to him, I was like, this is the first time we've ever spoken. Like it's mm. it's like. You know, like me and you, like same kind of deal. Like, maybe it's going to happen more. I don't know. Maybe it's going to happen. You'd like to think. Yeah, like, like I said, think. there's no roadmap here. There's no playbook. We're just kind of pushing forward in time into black space, and we can just fill it how we want. So, um, yeah, if you've got any ideas for what it should be called, put it in the comments. Or there's going to be a link to James's <laughs> channel in the description. So go over there and let him know under that podcast. But yeah, thanks so much, James, for having this conversation. I feel like I'm going to call this the conversation. But I need to think Ooh, about it. Like it. Yeah, the conversation. Yeah, no, I dot, really dot, appreciate dot with you, James. You chatting to me. Um, you know, it's all, always good for like little reflective moments. I'm gonna you know, even talking with stuff uh, about stuff with you. I'm like, yeah, I just need to make myself happy. Mm. With what makes me happy, and I can guarantee you that any stream that I do with Andrew is my but what next week leading up to GT7 or GT7 in the future is going to be just, you're going to see the smile. Right. You're going to like, just Positive racing. Head, head over to Positive James' racing. channel. I'll be March, March is GT Positivity Month again. I'm saying it now. Nice. We're going to be positive and have a great, great time. But thank you so much. I, you know, I hope people get a lot from this and you know, even, even yourself got to reflect on some things that you yeah, haven't definitely. thought about before. And, Definitely. Awesome. Never done this before. We barely spoke before we started going live. So, um, yeah, I really hope people enjoyed it. And if you have any thoughts on these formats, let us know in the comments to our videos because no one else really does these. Maybe there's a reason why, because they're not that interesting. Or maybe they are really interesting. <laughs> we don't know. So let let us know. And, um, yeah, going to end the video. And see you on next one.